there's really kind of two stages we go through before we have uninterrupted uh, continuity of attention. And the first of those is where we become distracted and forget the meditation object, and that leads to thinking about one thing and then another and another, what we call mind wandering. And a long period of mind wandering will occur before you recognize what's happening. And so there's a stage that is characterized predominantly by a lot of mind wandering. So that during the period of sitting, uh, you may have spent as much time in mind wandering as you did actually attending the meditation object. And then the next stage that we get to is where we still are distracted and may forget the meditation object, but it's only very briefly and, and then we become aware of it. So uh, what would be most helpful to discuss in terms of what would be helpful to you? Dealing with the mind wandering aspect or with the brief period of forgetting? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, some days it's more like water, and some days it's more like water. Yes, and that and that is uh, that's completely typical. That's the way it happens. I mean, usually, when somebody starts meditating, maybe the first couple of times they sit, they don't have too much trouble with mind wandering because it's all brand new and tight. But then they get into the forgetting of mind wandering. And then, as as they begin to succeed in training their mind and have more and more of the experience of uh, short periods of forgetting without so much mind wandering, and longer periods that they can say with meditation of it. Um, so yeah, I can speak a little bit about both of those. One thing that's very important to keep in mind is that the worst thing that you can do for yourself is to judge the quality of your meditation based on the fact that you uh, are become distracted uh, or that you create the meditation object or that you have mind wandering. These are completely normal. And, you know, it, meditation is called mind training. That's what, that's what the words actually mean if we go to the day Poly of the Sanskrit. And the significance of that is meditation is not something that you do because you don't have the power to do it. It's something your mind does and it will only do it if you skillfully train it. You know, And it's like if you're training a, a, a horse or a dog or an elephant, uh, you don't make them do anything. Instead, you train them, and then the end result is they do what you want. And it's the same kind of thing with meditation, is you're training your mind, and it's the skill in training that produces the result. You're not forcing it, and of course, you know, if you were trying to train an elephant, you wouldn't get very far by getting angry and being judgmental and everything else. And, and, and the idea that you wouldn't do that is absolutely absurd, but when we go to meditate, it's exactly what we do. You know, we, uh, we start off, I, I am going to make my mind stay on this meditation object. And then when it doesn't, uh, we either blame the self that we think we are, or else we blame the mind that meant didn't do what the self told it to do. And none of that's very helpful. So avoid any sort of negative state of mind. You want to be a completely relaxed, peaceful, comfortable mood. And cultivate the idea always that your meditation time, that's, that's your time. That's special time. This time to relax. Just time to do what's good for you. Not time that belongs to the rest of the world. So, so that There's already a sense of uh, a relaxed happiness that you that you bring to it but when you sit down. Ah, great! This is this is my time. Now you're going to train your mind. 
And your mind's going to do what it has done all your life. So all your life, your mind has, uh, it dwells on one thing because that thing is interesting and important. And then it tends to jump around to other things, always looking to see if there's something more interesting and important. This is what happens all day long. It's very important. If it didn't happen, then we wouldn't function very well because we wouldn't put our limited capacity for conscious awareness on the things that were most valuable and important. So it's completely normal that your mind is always looking around to see if there's something more useful to do than what it's doing, and more important, and more satisfying, more rewarding, uh, or more dangerous, or, or more worthy of worrying. You know, you know the kinds of things. I mean, it is, that's that's the nature of the distractions that capture our attention and cause us to forget the meditation object is that they they appear as more important. And two things happen. Uh, sometimes your attention when what you're attending to doesn't seem particularly important at all, when it's, it's, it's lost whatever importance it had, your mind actively your, uh, searches for something else. But the other thing is you're focused on your meditation object or in your daily life something else, and something else suddenly comes into your awareness, either externally because it's uh, you know, some sensation that uh, captures your attention or some thought. You suddenly remember something you were supposed to do or that sort of thing. So this is the normal state of affairs. And when you sit down and meditate, you'll experience both of them. As soon as some sense of, uh, uh, you know, well, this breath is the same as the last one, the one before and the one before that, therefore, time to look for something more interesting. And this is not that you consciously decide that, you don't. It's an unconscious mental process that does this all the time. It does its job. It starts looking for something more interesting. Or likewise, you're sitting there and you're meditating, and all of a sudden you remember something or think of something that's important comes into your mind. Uh, so that's completely normal. So you don't blame yourself for it. 